Welcome back to episode 2 in my video series about home security cameras and Frigate. In this video series, I'm going to show you how I use an open source AI powered security camera system called Frigate to get notified when the cameras around my house detect people, vehicles, or foxes. Frigate is a free to use NVR, which stands for Network Video Recorder, that can be installed on an old computer or a NAS using Docker or as a Home Assistant add on. It uses AI running locally on your computer to make sense of what your camera is looking at and only alerts you when it's something you care about, not wind blowing leaves on trees or shadows passing over your garden. In the last video, I showed you how to install Frigate onto a computer in your own home, either as a Home Assistant add on or a Docker container. I showed you how to add your security cameras and start recording footage to your lone local hard disk. If you don't already have Frigate running at home, then check out that video first, which should get you started. In this video, we'll be diving deeper into how Frigate's AI detection works, how to set it up, and how to tweak it to get the most accurate results and less false positives. We'll then finish off the series in the next video by integrating Frigate into Home Assistant. This will let us see the clips of objects that our AI detected directly within Home Assistant, and also use a blueprint to get notified via the companion app when an object is detected. Like most things in smart homes, you'll probably need to do a fair bit of fiddling with Frigate to get it to produce really great results. An out of the box solution is unlikely to be perfect with all of the defaults set, so I'm going to show you what I've done in my house to get mine working pretty darn well. In fact, my Frigate setup works better than my previous Google Nest or Unify camera systems ever did. But before we can get started, we need to understand a bit more about how Frigate works and some of its core concepts. This will make it much easier to understand how to tweak its settings later on to get better results. We'll start with objects. These are the specific things that Frigate will be using its AI brain to look for inside of your camera footage. Most off-the-shelf security cameras that claim to have object detection are probably only able to tell you when it sees people, cars, and sometimes packages. But depending on your lifestyle and where you live, it may be more useful to know when the camera sees motorcycles, or bears, or in the case of someone living in rainy old London, umbrellas. Frigate has the ability to detect dozens of different objects, so you need to tell it via the configuration file which of these ones you're interested in. Here in my configuration file, you can see that I want to track people, dogs, and cats in my back garden, so I've added these to my back cam camera. I don't care if there are cats and dogs at the front of my house, only at the back. Here in my front cam section, I want to know when people and umbrellas are detected, just in case someone sneaks up to my house with an umbrella covering their head. You can add any supported object to this list, just be aware that the more objects you add to the list, the harder Frigate will need to work in order to detect them, so it's likely going to affect your detection performance. Anyway, once you've added objects to the configuration file, Frigate will continuously scan your camera streams looking for those specific items. But to make this work properly, you need to make sure you've correctly set up your security camera streams. A lot of IP security cameras out there offer multiple video streams from the one camera in different resolutions. For example, it may have a higher resolution mainstream, and a lower resolution substream, each with their own unique RTSP streaming URLs. What you ideally want to do is record the high resolution stream to your hard disk, so that if you want to go back and view the footage of a burglary, then you can see as much detail in that footage as possible. You should then use the lower resolution stream for live viewing your video cameras, so that you're not using huge amounts of data just to quickly eyeball your security camera footage. A low resolution stream is plenty good enough to see if there's a person or car in your video footage, even if it may not be high enough resolution to make out a license plate or to see all of the detail in a person's face. You can also use this lower resolution stream for AI object detection. You don't need that many pixels to tell if something is a person or a car or a hot dog. Frigate deals with this through the concept of roles, which we briefly touched on in the last video, and there are three types of roles that it uses. There's a detection role, which is used to detect motion and objects in your video streams. There are some recommendations in the Frigate documentation here for the ideal resolution and frame rates for this. If your camera lets you customize these settings on a particular stream, then you should do that. Otherwise, just use the lower quality stream if that's what's available. Choosing a really high resolution and frame rate stream here will use loads more CPU power and probably won't make it any more accurate. Next we have the recording role, which is the stream that gets recorded onto your hard disk, and that should be the highest quality stream that you've got. And finally, there is the stream viewing role, or the RTMP role as it's known. This is the stream that will be displayed on your Frigate user interface when you're viewing your cameras live, and the one that you can also see in your Home Assistant live stream. You should use the lower resolution stream for this role so that it loads up fast and doesn't use up too much data. 
These roles are configured in your frigate configuration file. Here's an example of how I've set up my high and low resolution RTSP streams with their specific roles. I have the recording role on the high resolution stream and the detect and RTMP roles on the low resolution stream. Just make sure that you also set the detect width, height and frame rate to match the resolution and FPS of the stream that you're using for the detect role. Now once Frigate detects one of the objects that you care about, you'll probably want it to create a snapshot and a recording of this. A snapshot is essentially a screenshot of a detected object, and they're really useful for you to quickly scroll through all the things your camera thinks it saw. This lets you decide if you want to go in and take a closer look. A snapshot also has the bounding box around the image, so you can see what the AI thought it saw and how certain it was about that. A recording is a video snippet of the detected object, so you can see it in motion. I don't really like cats. Why are they always mooching around in my back garden? Both snapshots and recordings can be accessed in the Frigate UI via Home Assistant, and we can use them in our notifications too, so I suggest you turn them on. Here you can see my Frigate configuration file where I've turned on snapshots and recordings by setting the enabled flag to true. I've also changed the retention of the recordings. What I've basically done here is set the default recording retention to be five days. That means Frigate will keep the last five days of all video footage and delete anything older than that. But if any of the objects I care about were detected, then it will keep the recordings of those particular items for 10 days. This is how I balance my disk space with the ability to keep video footage of all the things that might be important to me, like cats. Again, there is a huge amount of information available in the Frigate documentation, so you can tweak these settings to something that makes sense for your own hardware and storage availability. If you've gotten this far, that is set up your camera streams and your roles, told Frigate what objects to look for, and enabled your snapshots and recordings, then you should now have a system that is pretty much working. If it's set up to detect people and you walk in front of your camera, you should be able to now see an event created in the Frigate UI for a person. You should then be able to see the snapshot and the recorded clip of that particular event. This is by no means going to be a perfect setup, and you're likely going to get a lot of false positives and noise. This next part of the video is going to be focused on improving your detection performance and reducing these false positives. But in order to know what you're optimizing for, you'll need to understand how Frigate behaves in your own environment without any other tweaks. I suggest running your system like this for a couple of days to see what kind of events get detected and how quickly. Once we've got a baseline of what works well and what needs improvement, we can start tweaking some more of these settings. But before we do this, we need to understand how the AI detection actually works. Frigate uses the CPU to keep an eye on the video stream and tries to identify if any areas of the footage are moving. Essentially, it's looking for motion. You can see it doing that here in my live video stream, where the boxes that appear are the areas that the CPU has identified as motion. Some cheaper, off-the-shelf cameras will also detect and alert you if they've seen motion, but this generally just ends up with you getting alerted to trees blowing in the wind and a bunch of other useless things. When Frigate detects motion, it takes a snippet of the thing that has moved and passes it over to a detector to analyze that small square to see if it matches any of the objects that we've asked it to look out for. The detector uses an open source machine learning platform called TensorFlow to do some magic and figure out what it thinks it sees in the picture. I have no idea how it works, but it does, and it works pretty well too. The detector will then respond back and say whether or not it's something that we care about and how certain it is about that. If it's an object that we care about and it's certain enough about it, Frigate will store the snapshot and the recording like we've asked it to do. By default, Frigate will use the CPU as a detector, which unfortunately puts a huge amount of extra strain onto your processor. This load increases as you add more cameras and more objects to detect. Image recognition is a very CPU intensive exercise, and you might notice that it takes some time to identify objects, especially if you've got lots of motion going on in your camera streams. For the first six months or so, I ran Frigate on my Intel NUC with an Intel i3 processor and two camera streams. It worked pretty well most of the time, but I did notice the CPU fan kicking in a lot each time that it processed a detection event. Obviously, you can improve the performance of this detection process by adding a more powerful or extra CPU that can be used by the detector to analyze these images, but this is probably going to be expensive and difficult to do. Luckily, Google invented something called a Tensor Processing Unit, or TPU, which is kind of like a special CPU designed to run TensorFlow in a really efficient way. These are known as Google Coral TPUs, and they're much cheaper to buy than a CPU, because they only really do one thing, and that is run TensorFlow thingies. Apparently one $60 Coral TPU will outperform a $2,000 CPU when it comes to object detection like this. 
Corals come in a variety of different form factors, including PCIe, M2, and USB, so they integrate into a lot of different types of computers. They're also supported, and in fact recommended, by the developers of Frigate. Unluckily, there has been a global chip shortage over the last couple of years, and it's almost impossible to buy a Coral TPU anywhere in the world. Hopefully the chip shortage comes to an end soon, and you'll be able to buy them again. I was fortunate enough to find a USB one for sale on eBay, and it works great with my Intel NUC. Unfortunately, it cost about three times more than its retail price, so it's probably not an ideal or sustainable solution. Detectors can be configured in the configuration file, and for the most part, you'll need to rely on CPU detectors. I had the best results when I created one CPU detector for each camera, and you can find documentation about this on the Frigate website. If you do find yourself a Coral TPU, you can go back later and edit your configuration file to use that as a detector instead. This is also why I recommend not running Frigate on lower powered machines like a Raspberry Pi. You can probably get away with it if you have a TPU, but if you're using CPU detectors, it's not gonna go well for you. One thing that you can do to take some of the load off your CPU is to enable hardware acceleration. This will let Frigate take advantage of some specialist graphics hardware or GPUs in your computer to work with all the video streams and images. Adding hardware acceleration won't improve your object detection, but it will speed up almost everything else your CPU is doing with the images, including looking for motion, resizing snapshots, and decoding video streams. Here you can see the section in my configuration file where I've added my hardware acceleration settings. This will need to be specific to your CPU and hardware, and you can find a whole list of these in the Frigate documentation. I essentially just copy and pasted mine out of here. The last thing you can do to improve the performance of your AI detection is to reduce the amount of snapshots that the detector has to try and process. If we look at my back garden again on a windy day, you can see all the squares that indicate motion. Each one of these squares gets sent to the detector to check whether or not there are any people, cats or dogs inside the square. You can get to this view by clicking on your camera in the Frigate UI, then going to the debug section and turning on motion boxes in the options area. This is why I recommend keeping the defaults running for a few days before you start to tweak things. It's by observing things like this that you'll be able to tailor your tweaks to get the most out of your hardware. My goal was to stop the detector from having to analyze more motion events than it needs to. I'm only interested in objects that are actually in my back garden, the part inside the walls. I don't care if there's a person, dog or cat in the neighbor's garden or on the fence. To improve this, we can use what Frigate calls motion masks. These are areas of the image that we want to ignore motion in. In this case, I want to ignore the bushes along the wall and any other parts of the image that are pretty impossible to have objects that I care about in it. You can see here that I've masked out a large area of the bushes and the wall, so Frigate will not look for any motion in any of those areas, which will reduce the processing that the detector has to do. You'll need to find a good balance here of what areas you mask out and which ones you don't. I might miss Spider-Man or someone rappelling off my roof and down the wall, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. Also be careful that you don't mask out too much of the footage though. It will take Frigate a few frames to detect if there's motion, and then need to process that. If you mask out too much of it, then it may miss these motion events entirely. You'll still be able to see the video footage behind a motion mask when you're not in the debug mode. These masks don't change what is recorded or visible in the stream, only where Frigate looks for motion. You can create a motion mask in the debug mode using the mask and zone creator. Click on the image and it will draw out an area for you. You can move it around by dragging the dots around until you're happy with where it is. Now you can copy this motion mask out and paste it into the configuration for that particular camera in your config file. The best way to go about this is to mask out an area and then go back to the debug viewer to see whether there are now more or less motion boxes than before and to see if that negatively impacts your detection. There's a whole section on masks in the Frigate documentation, which you should definitely check out if you're using this feature. These are pretty much all of the tweaks that I've done to improve the performance of my Frigate AI detection. The last set of tweaks that I did were to reduce the false positives and notification spam of images that were not correctly classified or I wasn't interested in. You can see in the UI here that one cold and rainy night, Frigate decided that my barbecue was a person dozens of times. Each time it thought my barbecue was a person, it sent me a push notification. When I looked at these events, I noticed that Frigate was only 70-ish percent sure that my barbecue was a person, but it was over 80% sure when it detected me in the back garden. To prevent this from happening again, I set the threshold in my config file to say it has to be at least 80% sure that it's a person before it records it as an event. 
The next problem that I had was that Frigate would send me a notification every time a person walked down the street in front of my house. I live on a busy public footpath in London, so it's perfectly normal for people to walk by my house. I didn't want to know about each and every time someone did that. Frigate has a way to deal with this through zones. A zone is an area of your video stream that you particularly care about, and they can be accessed through the debug viewer in the Frigate UI by turning on the zones option. Here you can see I have two zones, one for my front steps and one for my front patio. I only want an event to be recorded in Frigate if a person enters one of these two zones, essentially coming onto my land. You can create a zone the exact same way you create a mask, by using the mask and zone creator, and by dragging the little dots until you have an area that you want. You can see that I've moved my zone slightly away from the edge of the steps and the wall, because if any corner of a bounding box around the object touches into the zone itself, then it configures the object to have entered that zone, even if they only walked close by it. Once you've created your zones, you can copy and paste them into the configuration file for that camera, just like a mask. You can see in my configuration file here, the two zones that are configured for my front camera. This is also where I've listed the objects that I want to be detected in those zones, and that I want Frigate to be at least 70% sure that it's a person before it records an event. I've also updated the snapshot and record entries for the camera to make these two zones required. What this will do is not record an event in Frigate for people or umbrellas unless they move into one of these two zones. This prevents Frigate from recording events for every single person that walks past my house. Events are only recorded when someone comes onto my actual property. You can also use zones to reduce the number of checks that the detector has to do. You could tell it to look for cars only on your driveway, not in your front lawn or your patio, where it should be impossible for there to be cars. This will reduce the amount of work your detector has to do, and should therefore improve your detection performance. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. That was quite a lot of information to take in, but you now know everything that I've learned over the past six months about tweaking Frigate to get really accurate and local AI object detection working with your IP video cameras. This has been working far better for me than the AI object detection that I previously had with Unify and the Google Nest camera systems. And best of all, it works without sending any of my information or video footage to any third-party companies in the cloud. If you want to dive deeper into Frigate and learn how to tweak its configuration file even further, then take a look at the Frigate documentation, which I've linked in the description below. In the next video in this series, I'll be showing you how to integrate Frigate into Home Assistant. I use this to get notified via the Home Assistant companion app when objects are detected on my cameras, and I can instantly see the snapshots and recorded clips of that event directly from the notification. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. I regularly release videos about home automation, smart devices, and Home Assistant, much like the ones you can see on screen now. So whilst you're down there giving this video a thumbs up, please also subscribe to the channel so that you know when I've made a new video, and then together we can make your home smarter.